guys, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I edit my photos and how I edit them for my personal photography and how I edit them for Instagram. It's kind of a mishmash, so I'm going to show you how I do both. In case anyone is wondering what camera I shoot on, I have the Nikon D3300. I have two kit lenses that came with the camera, an 18 to 55 and a 55 to 200 millimeter lens. And I also recently got a 50 millimeter lens, which is what I shoot most of my photos on now. But when I film these videos, it's on my 18 to 55 lens. Now, I also have an iPhone 7 Plus, and it has become like my right hand man when I don't have my camera with me. Despite a lot of criticism on the 7 Plus portrait mode, I really like it, and I think it's a great camera to have when I don't have my big camera. So for anyone who doesn't know what I do when I'm not making videos, I am a graphic designer. I have a degree in graphic design. I am the lead designer at Zero Gravity here in Los Angeles. We are a super cool phone case company. We make cool ones like this bad boy right here. So I'm going to try to keep this video as simple as possible for everyone to understand and try not to go into too much confusing and crazy detail so anyone can understand this. So yeah, let's get right into it. One thing to remember when I am editing these photos is it's not important to have the nicest camera in the world or the nicest phone camera in the world. It's really just about the composition of the photo and who you're shooting, what you're shooting, and how you're editing. So I'm going to start editing on my phone right here. I do most of my editing for my Instagram on my phone. If I have something major, I'll throw it into Photoshop on my computer and I'll edit on there. The two apps I use to edit my photos with, I start in Adobe Lightroom and then I move everything into ViscoCam. And I kind of toggle between those two programs to get it like the best photo I can. These are both apps you can download from the App Store, they're both free, but you can end up spending a lot of money in them like I have. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Adobe Lightroom right here. And so right off the bat I have my four photos that I'm going to edit. So we're going to start with this guy right here. And one thing that I really watch for for photos like this is the highlights and shadows. So I'm going to make the highlights really bright, white, and crisp, and I'm going to make the shadows really dark and have like a high contrast to the highlight. So I'm going to go in and immediately pull up some of the exposure. Not too much because I don't want to start losing any detail. I'm going to pull up some of the contrast highlights and pulling up the shadows up the whites and then when we get down to the blacks we're going to pull that down so we have those shadows staying pretty dark but everything else is staying light and then we're going to go over to the color option and we're going to pull the warmth up just a hair and then I'm going to go down to vibrance pull that out a few ticks all right and then we're going to go up to the upper right hand wheel and then it's going to pull up all of the different color options. And so you can toggle around in here and kind of play with a few different looks. But for what I'm going for right now is a really simple color scheme. I'm going to kind of bounce around, pull up saturations. And a really major key in making photos look really crisp and white are your yellow tones and Lightroom is really great for this because I can go right here into the yellow colors I have my hue saturation and so I'm going to pull my saturation of any yellow tones completely out and that way all of the whites are going to be really bright and they're not going to look muddy and then I'm going to bounce into my blue and teal and I can kind of push and pull you see it really in the water. And so I'm going to make it a little bit more green. And then I'm going to pull a little bit of saturation out of it. Just like that. Let's see if this does anything. So that's really affecting the shadows right there. So I'm going to pull some green into that. Pull saturation out. Let's see if I can do that. I don't know that. All right. So that's pretty much all I'm going to do in regards to light right there. And so I can go up into the upper left hand corner and there's a little like split screen. So I can push that and see the before and then release it and see the after so I can see where I started and where I am now. And now I'm going to go up and import this directly into Visco. Just like that. 
now I'm gonna pop over into this gum and it's gonna pop right up just like that. I'm gonna go into my filters. And so I have all of the presets right now available at the Visco store. And typically for my Instagram, I am staying currently like in the A series. I really like them um, for the contrast with the whites and like reds. So I would say for this photo, ooh, both of those look good. I think A4. Yeah, we're gonna go full up with A4. And then I'm gonna go into the individual settings, hit some grain. I like a lot of grain, because I like film. So I have some grain there, and then it's all about the crop. results for that photo. All right, so I'm back here in Lightroom, and so I'm gonna go and move on to my next picture of my dear friend, Seth. And so I'm going to do kind of the same routine like I did with the other. I'm gonna push the contrast up in this photo, push my highlights, pull up some of my shadows because this picture didn't turn out as well as I hoped, so I'm going to try to make it look better, and pull up some of the whites. Um, pull down some of the blacks like that. I'm going to go into my color, warm this photo up a little bit. I think tint is a really useful tool, so I'm going to add some pink to this to add some color to his face. And pull a little bit of vibrance out just because that's kind of my aesthetic. Maybe like three, yeah. Going up into the color wheel. Pull some saturation into his skin so he looks a little more alive. <laughs> Let's see. His glasses are yellow, so I'm gonna really push it here. Into my greens. I typically make the greens pretty yellow, so they aren't as vibrant in my face. I pull some of the saturation out like that. I'm gonna go up into this sky photo, sky sort of color thing. I don't know. But, yeah, bring that up. Kind of see where we started, where we are now. Alright, alright. And we're gonna export this straight into his scope. And I already know that I'm going to want to make this photo black and white. So I have quite a few black and white presets. Um, not all black and white photos are the same, and you can't necessarily throw any black and white filter onto a photo and expect it to look good. So it takes some playing around. I typically resort to the one through three series. So I think we're gonna go with two, and I'm gonna set that probably around eight. And since this is black and white, I think it could, it could use some grain to add a little bit more of an artistic aesthetic. Um, not all photos need grain, but sometimes it's nice, sometimes it just overdoes it. So I'm probably going to set that at like four-ish. And yeah, that's a, a black and white portrait. And this phone... Or <coughs> I'm a mess! Ugh. So this photo was shot on my 
phone. It was not shot on my camera, but this was in portrait mode. So you can see kind of in the background where it's blurry. And so, yeah, that's an example of portrait mode on the iPhone 7 Plus. All right, so again, in Lightroom, we're gonna go into this next photo that we took this weekend when we drove up to um, kind of like north of LA and it's the desert super bloom right now so all of California is just filled with flowers. So this is a picture Matt took and I'm gonna go and edit it. So we're gonna to go and pull a little bit of the exposure out just to make it a little bit darker so we can pull some of the parts due to my very white shirt. Um, reflecting some of that light off, we're losing some contrast. So we're going to pull exposure out, see if we'll play around with this regular contrast if that helps. It does a little bit. All right. And for our highlights, we're actually going to pull some of those down. So already we're gaining some contrast back in my shirt. Um, pull some of the shadows up. I don't, I don't even think we should pull the whites up. If anything, we should pull them down. And then pull the black down a little bit too. So just to jump back to where we were, to where we are now, we have a lot more definition in all of my clothing. And we're not losing any of like those smaller details where the sun is hitting. Alright, so now we're gonna go into the color. Pull some warmth into there since it's a really bright and vibrant photo. Probably skip over the tint, pull a little tiny bit of vibrance out. Jump up here into the color. And this is where it can get really fun. Um, I can make these flowers like really kind of yellow. I can make them kind of red. But you have to watch um, my skin tone so I'm, I'm not really making myself look you know, super red or super jaundice. So, probably gonna leave it as is. Pull up a little bit of the saturation, just so those flowers can kind of sing. So I'm in my yellow, and I'm gonna kind of pull this hue a little bit toward the orange spectrum to kind of take the really bright vibrance of that green. Kind of matches the vibe of the rest of the photo. Pull that down a little bit. Put the saturation. Yeah, maybe we're gonna pull that down. Maybe like five. Just like that. We're gonna jump into our dark blues. So this is where I'm gonna have the most um, flexibility with the sky color. So I'm going to pull that down toward the green side of the spectrum and then pull a little bit of that saturation out, just like that. So now we're going to jump back and forth to see where we started. So we started with kind of a semi overexposed photo and releasing that, we gained a lot more contrast in my shirt and in my hair without, you know, ruining any of the photo. So we're gonna go and open that into Visco. And there she is. And now for this one, I just bought a new pack of presets. The Low Contrast series has a V in it. So I wanna play around with these. Ooh. V5. That's nice. So that's V5, 6, 7, and 8. Just like that. I kind of really liked the vibe of V5. Maybe we'll keep it at like 10. That's nice. I think we should add just a little bit of grain to this photo. I think a little bit of grain looks nice over um, the blurred effect, 
you get with a really shallow depth of field. And so I think it helps kind of emphasize like the focal point in the image. So pull that up a little bit just like that. And one thing I am going to do is I'm going to try to straighten this photo a little bit because that horizon in the back is really bothering me. So since it's just a little bit off, we're going to pull that in just like that. Maybe adjust this crop a little bit so I'm a little bit more centered. All right, so we're gonna move on to our last photo. And I already know where I want to go with this photo. I want it to be really bright and saturated, but not like too saturated to where it doesn't look good. Um, this is gonna be really nice in contrast to some of my other photos that tend to be a little bit more pastel and gentle, but I want this one to be really bold and bright. So the first thing I'm gonna do is pull out a little bit of the exposure because I know I'm gonna push it later. Um, I'm going to pull up some of the contrast, pull down on some of the highlights so I keep some definition in his face. I'm going to pull up a hair on the saturation, or shadows, sorry. Pull down on the whites and pull down on the blacks, just like that. So that's pretty minor, but it's going to be just enough for where we're going. We're going to pull some of the warmth up and pull the tint slightly to the magenta side. We're going to leave the vibrance and we're leaving the saturation as is. I'm going to pop up into our color wheel, jump into our oranges, push it a little bit to the red, push that saturation, jumping into our yellows, pushing that orange and the saturation up a little bit on those. Going into the greens, pulling the greens toward the yellow side, just like that, and hopping over to our blues, pulling the hues toward the green, and pushing the saturation just a tad like that. So before, after, not a huge, huge jump, but it's mainly going to come in with the filter I have in mind for this photo. So we jump into Visco, and this is a really good photo to use the C series, which honestly all of them are really, like, really bright. So I know between the C7, 8, and 9, I'm going to love any of those. So now it's going to be a matter of which one works the best. So when I'm looking and jumping between these, I'm looking specifically at the detail in his face and which one really um, kind of pushes those shadows to have some more color in them. So I would say probably C7, I think. Maybe if we pull it down, probably like and a half like that. I'm gonna jump into the individual settings now. Let's see what some of that contrast looks like. So I'm gonna pull a little bit of the contrast out, a half a point, just like that. And since this is such a strong photo, I think that a little bit of green doesn't hurt. I think it looks really nice as just like a a little bit of texture against like a really blue sky. I'm just breaking it up. Plus the really heavy texture on the ground. I think it just, it adds just a complete composition and pulling it all together like that. But yeah, I'm gonna look at, so you can see how the grain is acting against like the solid colors like that and against the poppies on the ground. But I think it, it looks really nice and kind of adds a little bit of like a dirty effect. It makes it a little bit imperfect. Um, especially against like a skin texture. But yeah, that is that photo. 
So those are the four photos that I edited. I hope you enjoyed watching me and I hope you learned something and maybe you will go out and download Lightroom and Visco if you haven't already. And don't be intimidated by these programs. Lightroom is really intuitive. It's much, much simpler on the phone versus the desktop version. I do know a lot of the Adobe programs very well, so it's pretty easy for me to grab them for ones that I don't know. So definitely go check those out if you want to edit some dank photos. If you want to see more of the photos that haven't made it onto my Instagram just because there are other photos that I've done and portraits I've done of people, check them out on my website. I will leave the link right here and I will also leave it down in the description box. So go check those out if you want to see more. If anyone is interested in art or design or photography, leave a comment for me down below and I would be more than happy to do some more videos on this style of content. I really enjoy it and I would love to teach some more people about you know, the beauty of design and the beauty of photography and the beauty of art. So leave something for me down below and I would definitely check it out and make a video for you. Thank you so, so much for watching this video on how I edit all of my photos. If you, um, if you edited some photos, Feel free to tag me in them on Instagram or DM them to me. I would love to see some beautiful content. Or if you're still learning and you have like some questions about a photo, let me know. DM me. I will answer you. So thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Like this video if you liked it. Leave me a comment down below. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!